What a shame, poor Groom's Bride has to listen to this fucking music for the rest of the game. Welcome back, everybody. Let us see if we cannot finish this video game for you all today. I don't even remember what I'm doing in terms of a folder build here, so we are just going to uh, carry on and do all this stuff and blah blah blah. Actually, what'd you say? Alright, go to the agent center. So, we gotta go downtown and do this. Oh, hey, giant robot. Oh, yeah, because it's late into the game, and yeah. Again, sort of reminiscent of Battle Network 3, where they had the murder tanks hanging out everywhere. Alright, buddy. Let's talk. And let me put my chat window back on top of the... Over on OBS so I can see. Actually, why do I have it over there? I can have it on my other monitor. I'm dumb. There we go. Alright, Doc, what's up? Oh. Oh, hey, is that Dr. Cossack from... Uh... From BN3? I just made a reference to that game. Amazing. No, apparently not. He looks a lot less attractive than Dr. Cossack. Well, damn. Oh boy, um... <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna get the backstory. And, again, they're gonna throw in a few references to things from actual Toho canon. Like, the last name being Marga. And the idea of the Navi being an actual human child, basically, but it's still kind of a little silly. It's... I don't know, the plot in Battle Network is already pretty bad, mostly because RPG tropes do not fit the world building very well. And nor do they really fit a Mega Man story that well, but in this case, it's a little bit more out to lunch. Especially because here, they're pretty much literally saying, oh yeah, by the way, magic has existed as a thing from the very first game. Again, assuming that there would ever be more games in the series past this, which would be nice. I've actually been having a lot of fun with this, despite the huge breaks and the criticisms and everything. But also, at least in the original Battle Network, they waited until like 4 and 5 to start doing that. And I don't think that... There is no place for a crossover between that type of fantasy and technology. The Fantasy Star franchise did it extremely well. But it is so clumsily assembled in those games, in the, the Battle Network series, rather, that I just do not usually like it. Like, there's... There's been worse. I think that the Ratchet and Clank games on the PS3 are kind of the absolute worst about that sort of thing. Although, again, we'll we'll see that if we ever get around to playing those. I am considering it. I'm wondering if there's a more modern release of those. I know that there's a Ratchet and Clank collection for the PS4, I think. 
which would be nice to get out if I could get hold of that for pretty cheap. Because I do love the original uh, Ratchet & Clank trilogy. They are some of my favorite games on the PS2. I admittedly, a lot of that is probably due to nostalgia, because I played them when I was at a certain age. And, yeah. Uh, excuse me one second. That's better. Sorry. I didn't want that in the audio. I don't know. I don't think that that sort of trust is really possible considering who we're talking about here. He's here to get money or something, I don't know. What, what is... What is Lloyd doing over here, anyway? Um, yeah, I don't think that telling your kid that they have to give up their life for that sort of thing is actually usually gonna be a very good idea. Because that is a place where the Battle Network series is especially unrealistic, is that... Yeah. Well, time to... Get to a part where we can end the game, basically. Yeah, you just want to go home. Alright, well... Away we go. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not a mecha, it's a land plane. Uh-huh, sure. Whatever you say, Chief. And let's continue on to the next. Okay, um, that's... A cutscene there. Hmm. The main thing that I've learned from watching people play the Yakuza games is to, you know, they're pretty useful. Yeah, Remy would probably have like actual money in order to fund any of any sort of projects we need to to go into. Okay, so before we continue, we're going to take a look into this side quest. We are finally getting the larger end of the payoff of the Koishi Satori side quest. So let's go ahead and investigate this and see what the deal is. Hi, kid, who has a, a code that we've gotten before. All right, go to the correct location, please. Uh, it's not that hard for me to, if I just remember things. But on the other hand, that is generally going to be a little bit tough for me because I'm not always very smart. But we get a nice music change here, so that's something. All right, third floor? Oh no, I have to actually go visit them in their room. Gotcha. Oh. Well, okay. Um, there's not much going on in there, but okay.
Oh boy, I don't like where this is going. Oh, this is a real problem. Uh-oh. Yeah, a little different in some regards to the story of subterranean animism, but basically a spin off of that idea. Uh oh. AC is malfunctioning. Well, only on this floor. That's, uh, uh, sure. I guess? Question mark? Okay, whatever. Anyway, this... This is our second bonus dungeon that we can explore, that we get through just side quests. And we... Alright, so I'm gonna save real quick. You can see what the big problem here is, is that our health is going to be steadily draining as we go. If we run out of health, we get kicked out. Unlike the earlier dungeon where if we, uh... Earlier dungeon, very specifically, the, the gas comp or whatever it was called, where we could just sit at zero forever if we wish to. However, the game is not going to be very nice about that sort of thing anymore. Thankfully, we have plenty of opportunities, hopefully, to get some multi-kills, which will let us recover HP at the start of battle. And we have to poke at these fires in order to return conditions to normal in here. I think they should do what we want for the time being here. Oh god, oh fuck, I forgot this. This dungeon is also very bad because we spend a lot of time being affected by the melt status, which cuts our damage in half. I... This is one of the problems with, well, with a lot of indie game development, but in particular, a lot of people will look at stuff for a franchise like this and be like, oh, hey, yeah, let's let's just overstock it with things that are terrible, and that is justifiable because it's a, uh, you know, it, it's already a difficult franchise. I would strongly disagree. And you will see that it comes out especially when we are uh, dealing, pardon me, when we're dealing with the, uh, let me use my word, when we're dealing with those fires, they will, they'll do that a lot, and also, yes, we're, we're getting the second level, uh, version of the player gun enemies here, which I think we've only seen the first version before, and that was in the Border Concern PC. I think later on in here we actually encounter even higher level versions of those fuckers, which is great, because that's what anybody wants to deal with. Excuse me. Something good. Eh. I mean, okay. Yeah. So, the gimmick is 
not really that well ex explained to you, I don't think. You just have to sort of intuit that you need to deal with all of the fires in the area. Alright, getting close. Yeah, there we go. If we get the if we get the extra hit off, that is nice enough, I guess. Oh my god. The, these flare shots are some of the nastiest shit in this. Like, wow. Dropping a follow on behalf of Team DN. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Prodigal El Pizzo, I believe that is the pronunciation on that name. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, right. I, I used the wrong attack there. Ow. <laughs> this area is very much... Nix, is that a weed? Is that a weed? Um... Heck, am I stuck on something? <laughs> I pronounced it correctly. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Uh, to answer the question about is that a weed? I don't believe so. And to get around to what I was actually going to say is that this area is just sort of absurdly uh, feast or famine type of battling going on here. In that we are going to be fighting a lot of enemies that we will either demolish fairly easily or that we will get absolutely annihilated by. And you can see which one these are. Because uh, I believe that... I believe the term I'm looking for here is holy fuck. Ow. Uh, the game is not so amused by my swearing and yeah, we... With setups like that, it gets even worse. Uh, I'm not even going to try for a PA anymore. I should just stop doing that for the moment because I need to just end this fight. Yikes. Okay, let me go back and heal. It's a good thing these programs will heal you infinitely. And I don't have to start digging into my sub chips right off the bat because that would be terrible. As if this needs help in that department, right? Okay, let's get our drill drive on here. It's called drill break, but I've mentioned before that this is just the drill drive attack that Drill Man uses in DN3. Except with more damage. And also electric elements. Not that I'm complaining, because drill drive is so good. Drillman's ship is, like, actually one of the best in Battle Network 3, unironically. If, <laughs> in case anyone is here who needs a, a tip that also includes the word unironically, which will make you feel a little bit like you're not necessarily getting the most above-board advice. My apologies. I, I talk badly. Okay, there's the fire. Is this the last one on the floor? I forget if there's four here or not, because... It's been a while since I played this, and this area obviously beat the living crap out of me, like... Well, like anyone would really expect it to. Have you heard my descriptions of this? Yikes! Alright. Our damage this turn is not going to be as good as we want it to be because, again, the the damage halving thing is pretty, pretty nasty. But we can get some work to, uh, going there. Yeah, I think that will, was a... Uh, Yeah, if it hasn't been made clear yet, the dragons have some weird things going on with hit detection. That's not entirely the one I 
really wanted to hit there, but I'll take it anyway because it's free real estate at this point. Oh, your head's not extended enough yet. Dang it. Yeah, so... Uh... With regard to these enemies and their multiple hitboxes, it seems to vary how many they get depending on time. Hi there, uh, Retro Fanatic. How is it going? We're in an area of the game that is really nasty. I mentioned that earlier, though. Get this going. Hey. The music in most of the game is pretty fantastic. I will give... I'll, I gotta give this game that. Somebody realized at some point, like, hey, yeah, the, this series necessitates really good music. Both of the series involved here, really. As far as I know, all of the music in this game is original or is very... Uh, very strongly remixed, as it were. It is, if nothing else, an original version of a BN theme. If it's if it's a BN theme, it is an original version of it, is what I mean to say. Oh wait, do you explain? Yes. Okay, I was wrong before, that program does explain how that stuff works. I don't believe it is actually a theme from the Battle Network series, but it shares a lot of musical themes in common with it. It's... I'll put it this way, it's very easy to mistake it as something for, uh... Grinding for the final boss of the post-game. Wow, you've gotten a long way, buddy. Eh. And casino. Oh, I expect there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of time involved in that casino because it's a casino in a video game. There's a lot of grinding to be had in those, and usually they give you pretty good stuff. Which reminds me that I probably should look into the one in PSO2, now that I've started playing that. Maybe I should stream that more at some point, I don't know. Oh, that... Well, again, video game casinos, usually the exchange rate is going to be a little bit on the mean side. Ah, yeah, that's a problem. Speaking of problems, not so much this enemy group. I mean, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but I think this is tolerable. Get in close, please. Oh, I... I hit that on a bit of a reflex. So, that... I got what I give there, or what I deserve, or something. Well, yeah, you're pretty deep in if it, you're grinding for the final boss of the post-game. I would expect that the EXP returns would not be so great for you. That you'd be... you'd be spent... You'd be spent, yeah. Um, you'd be spending quite a bit of time picking away at stuff in order to get those levels. 79! Oh, yeah, that's... that's absolutely... That's going to take you a while. Alright, so we've got one more fire here, so I guess it's... I think that's six on this floor, then? Wow, that's pretty intense. Then again, this dungeon entire... in general. 85 to get Shiva. That... That seems about right from my admittedly limited experience with the SMT uh, overarching series. Shit, I never even played Persona 5. I actually maybe should do that at some point, although I've heard that uh, P5 Royal is much better. 
I'd have to see how much it would cost me to secure a copy of that, then. Because if there's one thing that I'm about, it's playing the best version of every game. Ha ha ha. You've only played Persona Revelations. Oh. Oh wow, so not only the original Persona, but all the way back in the realm of the original release of it. That... That's one hell of a throwback. Persona 2 is an interesting game. I've... I played a little bit of Persona 2 for the PSP when it came out. Because, of course, when that came out, I was like, okay, I've got to have this. Because uh, P2 Innocent Sin became sort of a semi-legendary game in the... Uh, words, please. P2 Innocent Sin became very much a semi-legendary game in the mid-2000s era because it never came out in the States for various reasons until it was released on PSP. And I picked up the PSP version when it came out. In fact, I think I bought it at release. I have a special edition that uh, comes in like a cardboard outer box and has a soundtrack CD with it. And I, I started playing it and I was like, okay, this is all right. And then I set it down for some reason and then didn't get around to picking it back up for a while. And then the next time that I was looking at actually playing it, I was like, wait, shouldn't I wait for Eternal... What if I just wait for Eternal Punishment to come out in the States? Uh, obviously the PSP version of Eternal Punishment because... As we all know, Eternal Punishment did come out in the States for the PS1. Back when it first came out in ye olde uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And then the PSP version of Eternal Punishment never came out. So... The Eternal Punishment and Innocent Sin games are two different games. They are a continuous storyline. So, absolutely I would recommend playing both. If you are able to get either of them to work. Which sounds like it might be a bit of a... Chore. And I used my stun incorrectly. Whoops. That, uh, that's some... That's some fine work there, Sonny Bucko Jim Boy. I don't know what the hell I just said, but I'm going to assume that it didn't make a whole lot of sense to you either. Yes, you should, you should have no problems emulating either on uh, PlayStation, by the way, and I assume that there is a fan translation out there for uh, Innocent Sin. So, that shouldn't be a problem. Eternal Punishment, I don't remember how people think about the overall translation of that, but if people don't like it, there's definitely a retranslation out there because, you know, that's usually the case. Uh, PSP emulation is spotty as hell. That I can absolutely confirm. And I really started to learn that around the time, of course, that Danganronpa was very popular on the internet. Because it was being LP'd on something awful, and everybody was picking up on that for a variety of reasons. So... Yeah, um... Oh, uh, I was going to say, did I get blinded? I think I did. Oh, right, these things regenerate health really fast, so that's kind of what we would call not great. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm gonna be having a bit of an issue here. Fuck, stop hitting me! These things go so fast. Right, well, at least there's one upside here, and that is that, well, first of all, we found the target, and second of all, while it's stunned, it doesn't regen. So, there's that. And area secure. The heat has been removed. We still have another... At least one more floor of this, though. As far as FF4 Complete goes, I have it, and I've only completed uh, the original FF4, which is still pretty good. It's a decent port, kind of along the lines of the other PSP Final Fantasy ports. Did nice. Uh, <laughs> changing the date to day three. Yes, that makes sense. So boss time is going to be a little bit. We've still got to go on a bit of a, a flame hunting quest here, and I think we may have to do that twice over on this floor. Don't quote me on that though. I could be wrong. Oh, that was stupid. a foolish maneuver. A giant propeller on my back. Uh, I'll look at it as, in a second and ex uh, double check what it is. That is... I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure what that is supposed to be. Actually. So... I mean, it's a, it's a possibility. However, it doesn't appear to spin up at any point, so... Not 100% likely, I guess. Alright, so let's let that go off. Stone end. There we go. And we're... Good-ish shape for this fight. I don't like it too much. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's... That's an option, too, is... Whoa! Oh. Fuck me running. Are, are they all dead? Wow, that that ended real fast. Uh, save. I don't know if I can run back to an NPC to heal. And then we get a fight like this, which is not really set up for me to be able to get an instant win. Yeah, I was absolutely getting demolished in that fight. I will not... <laughs> I will not lie for even a second. That is... That is a hard fight. Because those things are bouncing around constantly. Actually, if I can get into a fight, I get a free heal. Oh god. I actually made it back to the NPC. That's amazing. Let me get a save in. Yeah, no, don't worry. I absolutely was getting wrecked there. That... That fight, ooh, is all I'll say. There is wow. That that fight was hard. They they gave you they gave you two of they gave you three of those enemies just warping around at light speed, and my damage was cut in half. Fighting the enemies in those giant flame pillars is a really gross prospect. Ow. Nice of the game to let that fire stay after I killed the enemy with the flamethrower. That's pretty great, you video game. And drill through the face, and we get a fire net. We literally just got one of those ships, but in a different code. Okay, what are we what are we looking at here? Alright, three fire cats. This shouldn't actually be that bad, especially because we drew a drill break in the opening hand. Have I played Magicka 2? I have not. I have not. I I don't even know if I have that on Steam. I know that I have the original, and I've played the original Magicka quite a bit, off and on. It's been a couple of years since I touched it, but it was pretty fun from my recollection. Oh, 
Also, very easy to kill your partner in that game. Oh, oh, oh wow, okay, um, that's for a boss that isn't even part of the story mode yet. Wow, that's something else. Yeah, the other thing that I remember about Magicka, again, this is based on the original Magicka, is that you... Not only do you do hilarious amounts of friendly fire, it is much more damage to your partners, it feels like. Alright, what just happened? I will explain that right here in this menu. Okay, so... I have a power-up equipped to my character here called Crimson Noise, which gives me a chance to get random chips in this rank. And I just rolled into something that I, by all rights, really should not have at this point. Yomu is not in the story mode at this point, as far as I know. Might She might be in a post-game area, but we just got her V2 chip out of nowhere. So that is a pretty big shock. It's kind of like... It's kind of like when we got Druid Man a couple of videos ago, and... That wasn't supposed to happen. Except, perhaps even more so. I don't actually know yet, because I haven't had a chance to use it. I've... In my old playthrough, I never got that. And I didn't really get to the post-game areas, because I didn't know where they were. But even though this is probably going to be moving to a later in the week day, once I beat the story, I will definitely be making an attempt to go into all that post-game stuff in this playthrough. I'll be trying to show as much of this game as I know exists on this channel. Because... Again, I've, I feel I've mentioned this before, but I feel very positively about this. This is... This is a pretty well done project. And I say that in a fight like this where I'm getting absolutely roasted. I want to switch to... I want to switch to fighter. Yeah, sure, let's do that. At this point, since we've... Well, damn it. This is why we save in front of all of these, by the way, because, wow. It's very easy to get fucked over like that. Alright, we drew a drill break, opening hand. This fight is going to be a lot easier now. I mean, unfortunately, those hits were not not super amazing, but they're, they were pretty okay. Alright, so that was a pretty nice combo. We got very good stuff out of that white card there. I think white card is what that ship is named? I already forgot. I didn't even look at it. I just know the icon. Ow. You can stop that. It would be cool. Surprisingly simple solution, just punch a dragon in the mouth. That's something I want to see more of in fiction, I think. Alright, if you could... 
Yes, that's perfect. All right, so I'm pretty sure that that uh, getting somebody with Spanderman's spinning punch thing there is three hits total. It definitely makes a sound cue that suggests to me that that is a uh, that's a two hit attack. All right, there we go. We got Giga Flare Gun in addition to the all the others here. All right, ghost body and start bathing the field in electricity, and of course the little bastard dodged. Nice. Hey, we got a, a panel shot. That's not useful at this point in the game. Come on. Heal. Save. And I think now is when we come up to the boss. Or we might have to do more of the, the usual thing here. We'll find out in a second. Well, that was a bit of a waste of a counter hit, but not terrible. Oh boy, we gotta we gotta put out more fires. However, I think this area is only two floors long, so we should be getting to the boss pretty soon. Alright, so I'm not hugely concerned about the mine attacks from the filters here. Or I won't be right up until they start popping up right underneath me, which is a thing that I've seen happen, I believe. Or at least that happens with the chips sometimes, which is kind of garbage. My invisibility ran out at a very bad time there. Alright, we're almost done with this, at least this fight anyway. Oh, especially when we get that in our hand. Pop out our drill break and nice and quick. Hey. Save and keep going. Yes, there there absolutely is a lot of saving, by the way, for anyone who was thinking it, you're right. I'm doing that a lot for reasons of, well, you've seen. It's very easy to die in here. Hey, Dragon Flame 2. I don't think we had one of those yet, so that's nice. Black Napalm, I don't think we had that one just yet. 
And yeah, you can see right there, there's a boss right behind this door once we clear everything out of here. And we're also getting a new enemy in here, one that we haven't seen yet. At least not on this map. Actually, I don't think we've seen the Venom Wooly anywhere yet, so... That's definitely kind of a shock that we're, we're seeing that here. But I probably missed out on a chance of getting its ship by doing that. Oh well. We might have it already, even. Ghosts. Oh boy, so... This hand is not good for this purpose. Visible. Oh. Fuck you. We managed to just grab a massive amount of stuff to combo with really fast there while they were stunned, so that was pure luck. I can't believe we got away with that. Otherwise, that hand was absolute trash for that fight. Like, wow. Heal again. I don't know where the hell I'm supposed to go here. Actually, let's do this, and then, then we go. Right, that'll take a nice chunk out of everybody's health. Good times. Unfortunately, the chip's a bit of sad times, but, you know, at this point, what can you do with... Right, a ball to EX and two Mayos. I. That's a setup. That's a setup I can deal with, I think. Alright, get in front. Yeah, especially when that happens. That is definitely another instance of sheer dumb luck and the enemies all happening to be weak to electric attacks. So, wow? I'm gonna go with wow. And that one shot, that was nice. Alright. Illa Wooly. And, uh, one of these cats. Okay. You're not impressing me right now, game. I don't know how to tell you that, but... Well, aside from just saying you're not impressing me right now. There's a minor issue that you will notice with this fight where the yellow spider's uh, web... I almost just called it goo, that's not quite correct, is not fading out immediately. And, yeah, that is kind of a problem, but I think it's one we can weather. Oh, I'm in the idiot place. And I got what I deserve for being in the idiot place. Well, alright. Door is open. Heat has subsided. Let us go and heal, and let's go fight somebody's pet bird that has gone insane. That's right, folks, it's time to cross-examine the parrot. Wait, what? Uh, Phoenix Wright, what a game series. That might be fun to play on here. I, I certainly love those a lot, I just don't remember how to do most of it, so... 
it'll be... It'll be entertaining for people, I assume. Right. Save. And here we go. a terrible disease, you idiot! And see, this is one of the very few times where I actually am going to just get along with the you idiot, sort of. Because, honestly. Although, I mean, that's kind of the thing, too, about the game that this plot is borrowing from, is that Utsuho was not smart. And that was made very, very clear that, like, oh, hey, that this bird is a real bird brain. And I see we're going to be getting flare gun shenanigans, so dodging... Oh, boy. Uh, we get some MS Paint meteors, and we get also... Uh, uh, backwards wind. So... Yeah, that's an attack that we want to stun her out of because the the the, the headwind effect is kind of shitty. It's kind of massively shitty. What am I doing? I'm forgetting what order my chips are in. Ow! Whoa! Forgot about that. I didn't know didn't know she pulled that out this soon. And I missed with that. And wow, the the wind pierces ghost body. Yeah, yeah, she is hard as hell. This is a fight that is reasonably difficult. It's not as hard as some, but it's also not like, hey, yeah, uh, Druid Man is just gonna walk into all of my attacks over and over because of what folder I'm using. This should put things a little more to our advantage. Hopefully we can get a triple hit here. That's enough of those out of you. And unfortunately, it's only a double. Well, damn. Can't fault me for trying too much. Although, I mean, you can always do it a little. I know where I am, it's the internet. Crap, I... Fuck the order up. Ugh! Get... Alright, can you walk into that gravity ball, please? Yes, you can. And here we can see that she's in serious piss mode, and also that we are out of chips and the strongest style that we have against fire is the one that we have equipped right now so that's not going to do us a whole lot of good but we also missed a lot like a really kind of sad amount for this fight we're, we're definitely we're, we're getting our asses handed to us here this will need a reset, and oh, wow, that that just stays for a while. Okay, I did not know that. I've never been hit by that before. Or if I have, it was in a previous fight, and I don't remember. We can probably do it with this folder if I just fight better. And, I mean, maybe getting a good multi-hit off of... Uh, off of Drill Break would be a nice way to, to add to that. So 
we're gonna use a lot more of our up close stuff first. I just have to decide on the order here a little bit, because it's uh it's a bit of a balancing act. Alright. Yes! There we go. That's 240 damage. Okay, she's not even doing the dash just yet, so. Crap. Okay, now that's happening. And I used that with nothing on the field. Well, whoops. She didn't even show up where I thought she would. What a pain in my ass. And literally walked into that attack. Alright, well, here comes the murder cannon that I can't really get out the way of. Almost, we've almost beaten this. This just took a couple of tries of me fighting smarter, basically. And yet, still taking the death ray in the face. That's, again, just kind of the way of the world sometimes. You just sometimes have to get vaporized a little bit. And that was still uh, pretty close. You can tell that she hurts a lot, but we got our chip out of the deal, which we always do. Oh, they didn't want to make all those sprites for punching the crap out of someone. Hey, we got a dark chip for ourselves. Well, hopefully that wasn't too big of an interruption. We'll, we'll see how this goes. So basically we overheated the super can- that was a fucked up music loop. So basically we overheated the super cancer, okay, gotcha, um, sure, I guess that works. Also, I don't think her portrait has changed at all, even though it looked like she didn't have pupils or something before. This is- Pretty similar to a. This is pretty similar to one of the plot events in Battle Network 3, by the way. I forget if I have ever mentioned that at any point. And we got an add on for it, which I don't remember what that does. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so we can get information on what we're fighting by hitting the L button. That's... That's alright. We're not gonna use it very much, but it's alright. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna complain about that one. Alright, so we go back to our hometown. We talk to Remy, but first, obviously, I've got a bunch of crap to start shoving into a chip trader. At least I'm pretty sure I do. Let's find out. Yeah, we can do some of this. Maybe we don't have that much, but we got something. We can try and get a different, uh, different chip or two here from that.
I have any other... Have one of those. Break shot, we can only have three of those in. Oh, gravity ball three. That's... That's gonna be where the, the big free real estate is. Storm, and can we shove one more in? Life shield, all right. Let's see what we can get out of this. Fire net B, meh. Full air to you, meh. Poison net M, well there we go. We don't have to worry about the, the venom spider anymore. Poison road, and a knife. Not really useful chips, but it was worth a shot. We could have gotten something completely ridiculous out of the deal. Hey you. You know what Batman is? Well, you vampire person, so. Oh right, maybe we should talk to the person who was in a war and who will give us ridiculous amount of aid for getting her out of a tank. Stealth plane, huh? Alright, well, we've seen... We've seen some stealth machinery uh, with the military, so we could probably go and not go here. We could probably go harass Racing a little bit, and she might be able to give us a hand here. I don't think talking straight to the government is a good idea, but, you know, the, the kid might help us. I mean, I don't think anybody knows how to, how to control those. Offhand. Although that would probably be pretty helpful. I mean, those look like they've got quite a bit of firepower, and that would really help us get into places. Do I have oxen free? I don't think I do. I'm pretty sure I don't, in fact. I'm going to give that a I'm fairly certain that I do not have oxen free. Uh, Yuka, you don't happen to have a stealth fighter, do you? Actually, do you have a... Well, I mean, it's, it's a dollar, it's not quite free, but... I mean, that'd be a pun, I guess. Token incognito flight of... oh... Well, that's going to help us. Oh, five year anniversary. Yeah, actually, that kind of scans. I I knew it's been around for a while. Because when you mentioned it, I had sort of this psychological... Uh, you know, a, a bit of a flashback of remembering, oh, right. Someone I used to follow on Twitter, who later turned out to be a gigantic cockhead, was really into that game. It's not like I have bad memories associated with it, though. I mean, it's just, okay, somebody turned out to 
kind of suck on a human level. <laughs> you hear it's a good game? Well, I sure hope so. I've been ignoring this plot because it's incredibly contrived, sorry. Um... Anyway, yes. Friend streamed it semi-recently, so... You'd at least be able to pick up the basics from that, right? So, if it if it looks good, it's something that... I'll take a poke into Steam... ...and have a look at it. Alright, so we can... We can fight the kid if we want to, but for now, we're just gonna head into... ...our final story dungeon! And yes, the cockhead does have a name, but I don't want to drop it in here, you know, just by virtue of like, well, you know, I don't want to start fights, I guess. Uh-oh. Oh, you again. Yeah, apparently that's what a tank sounds like to whoever translated this. Kept him What? Okay, this is... This is sort of hitting a point where how much more can you get contrived in terms of storyline, because, like... I think at some point they reached, like, the Tyson zone with this sort of plot. Like, this has gotten so stupid that we can just keep getting dumber and dumber and nobody's gonna say anything. But I will. Alright, so the gimmick for this dungeon. We have to collect these data and... that will open certain gates based on which element is weak to... The element that corresponds to the data we have. Basically, they're like, hey, you know those mechanics that we incredibly ex that we expanded a little too heavily? Yeah, let's let's make the Oh. How about that shit? Let's make the the whole dungeon. And I mean, it could be worse, but also it could be a lot better. Super robot stuff with stupid amounts of text. Um Sure, I guess. Let's go with that. That's certainly a way to look at it. Also, yeah, they're... They're gonna start pulling out the stops in terms of viruses here. We're... We're gonna be getting into some fights that are actually... You know, a little bit on the nasty side. Especially if I screw up a timing like that. It's not nearly as bad as I thought it was when I saw the enemy that we were facing, the the cannon. Because I thought that was the one that we faced early on in the series that targeted all uh excuse me. Targeted all columns. Not quite, it's just the one that shoots really fast. Alright, so yeah, we just went through dirt, so. Pick up the grass, and that should let us through dirt and electric gates, I think. Oh yeah, I've definitely, uh... As I say, I'm knowledgeable enough about the Super Robot Wars series that I know that it's pretty intensive. I, again, still need to play some of those, but as has been said before, the one that I own, there is no translation patch for yet, because even though I know that the plot has been translated, nobody has uh, patched it together yet, I suppose. Well, if it's a thing that I can, uh... 
I, I don't see why I couldn't make that happen at some point. I guess I just have to decide on what sounds like the most fun one to play or has, like, characters that I recognize for being cool and stuff. Because that, of course, for anyone in here who is not in the know, that is one of the big things about the Super Robot Wars series, which accounts for a large part of why they are pretty much impossible to obtain in the West outside of getting the Japanese imports, uh, i.e. that they haven't been uh, localized in America, or localized into English, rather. Other countries speak in English besides America, even though our dialect is kind of so goofy that it's hard to believe. In America. Wait, no, that's... Uh, sometimes I'm kind of amazed that uh, the Abridged series is still a thing, by the way. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. Because I was watching some of the old ones, though, and holy fuck, some of that has aged so badly! Um, anyway... Yes, the reason why the Super Robot Wars games have mostly not been localized into English and those that have have not been released in the U.S. is because of massive, and I mean massive, licensing conflicts. Basically, since they are almost universally, with the exception of the original generation's game, which I think might be a one-off, they are huge crossovers. And despite the fact that Sunrise is kind of the biggest company that does mecha anime, they are definitely not the only ones. So unfortunately, it is nowhere near as simple as that sounds, and on top of that, I'm pretty sure in the English-speaking territories, the rights are very widely spread out beyond that, so it wouldn't just be as easy as uh, going to knock on Sunrise's door and being like, hey dudes, can we bring this game over? And they'll just be like, Actually, that's a little bit outside of our jurisdiction, but, you know, we would probably be okay with it if it weren't for that. And then you have to explain this stuff to people on the internet because, you know, that's the era we live in. Oh, did they... They released one with, uh... They released one with Code Geass stuff in it recently? Neat. There's two for the Switch, you think. Well, interesting. I... I didn't realize that. As you can tell by the fact that I didn't really even know that there was one for the Switch. But there are so many of those games, by the way. And they generally seem to be pretty well-respected. Yes, I do know that. They're starting with, at bare minimum, one of them that was on the PS3. They have been available in English-speaking territories in Asia. In, obviously, in English. So, as long as they can be imported, they can be played in English. And I would like to imagine as well that... Uh, the hell am I trying to say? Uh, that region issues are fairly minimal. Because, of course, that's always a thing with, with any sort of game import is... Is it going to work with the region console that I have? Second for PS3. That... That sounds correct, but I would like to make it very clear that I am not an expert on the series whatsoever, so I can't necessarily confirm if that is 100% correct, but that sounds right. There's 
are full energy. That we don't really need, but we'll take it anyway. Um, Should be finding another uh, key over here. So, yeah. Alright, this will let us through the lightning gate, and we pick that up. Okay. I thought we were going to that chip over there when I saw it earlier, but no, that is not correct. Alright. Fire gate, save, and here we go. We're going to start getting a boss rush of some previous story bosses here. I'm pretty sure we... Did we beat version 3 Marasa earlier? This is not going to be anything to worry about, really. grab oh well, if you're just gonna stand there for me this folder is very good specifically at fighting this boss well I mean I think she probably can swim that might not be a very useful endeavor this is the problem, though, is that she does do water damage, and our uh, Doctor Style is Earth Element, which will cause us issues like the fact that we take huge amounts of damage here. Unfortunately, since the game decided to gift us with something that was a pain in the ass to use, there's only so much we can do about that. Yes. Ow. So a thing to keep in mind is that her role in the story is that... Uh, well, not in this game's story, but in the main Toho series is she is a ghost who sinks ships. So, yeah, of course she's water element. She's... She probably would have to be, basically, just by contracts. Ow. Don't get hit on the backswing. It... Yes, that's... <laughs> that is what this game is. It's a... I mean, it... It's a reasonably good series. Just ignore the fandom. And everything they create. Okay, that's a bit of a stretch. This was obviously created by a fan as well. And as I said before, I think this is quite good. Alright, so we're going into extremely high risk mode here. Of just having that happen. Yeah, to be fair... I'm also saying that with the advisement that the games are hard as fuck. They are... They are definitely not easy. As you can tell by the fact that I just called them hard as fuck. Alright, so we go into elements... Into, uh... Elemental damage bonus mode here. And I forget what I had lined up. I don't really want that as a, a thing in my opening hand. That's a little, or not in my opening hand, in in my hand outside of using drill break. 
That was a little bit silly. I meant, to, I meant to take the other one, didn't I? Yes, yes, I did. Well, that wasn't particularly great. As you can tell, this is why I do try to... Like, not go quite so blisteringly fast, because otherwise I'll make stupid mistakes like that. If this hole could fill back in, it would be great. Well, since I already goofed up, we're gonna... We're just gonna use our our fang attacks here for pure damage. And our damage output is gonna be pretty good with those. Yeah, we'll just call that not my finest hour and, uh, you know, be done with that, I guess, and never mention it again. As long as I live. To a point where I'll just be like, why the hell was I, you know, to a point where I will get so old, I will forget why I didn't mention it or something. I mean, he's definitely a bit on the, the heavily armored side, so... Gotcha, so instead we're gonna take her off to the police. I'm sure that's a good idea. Wait. What do you mean, how did she get a tank? Doesn't she have a... What do you mean that that's a real tank? Didn't you literally just... I... Oh no, I think the... I think the writers have started to forget what the plot is here. Hey, we finally got that at the very last dungeon of the game. So let's let's see what we can do to equip undershirt here because that's useful, very very useful. Oh, we just gotta take out crimson noise. Well, I don't like that as an option too much, but it's free real estate. It's it's one of the most useful things in the game that we can have. So they definitely that's definitely a source of some added difficulty having that come up so late in the game. In the original uh, Battle Network 3, when the Navi customizer was first available and the undershirt program was actually a thing. Look at this big laser barrier. That's weird. So, yeah, in Battle Network 3, you got that as soon as you got the Navi customizer, and it was honestly one of the more useful programs that you could get because it lets you survive big hits like that with uh, only one health. However, they decided to push it all the way to the end of the game here, which, uh, that's a bit more frustrating, basically. Pretty much, but uh, Focus Sash and the Sturdy Effect only work if you're at full HP and you take the big hit. Undershirt works from any amount of HP, which is pretty busted with certain setups. Uh, rather infamously, in Battle Network 3, there was something known as Cardboard Immortality in the fandom where you just set a grass stage, use a use a wood style, and have undershirt equipped. Because your wood element, if you're on grass, you regenerate, the opponent can't do anything to kill you unless they remove the field. 
And so, of course, they, they started tweaking those things a little bit with the later games in order to nerf something that was that completely hilariously busted. Uh, Battle Network, of course, had a fairly active competitive scene in Japan when the games were still contemporary, uh, contemporaneous. And so I'm sure that Capcom was paying attention to that because there were actual tournaments and stuff. Oh, hey, look, a style change that we're going to skip over. Well, thanks a lot. We've already got good stuff. And so from here, we go through the Poison Gate, and... Yeah, the, there's going to be a lot of this. This dungeon is probably going to get pretty long, because I seem to remember some of these layouts get pretty wacky at some point. On the other hand, this is the last dungeon of the game, so yeah. We're, we're almost done with it, folks. Anyone who is waiting for me to get around to playing a different game on Mondays, well, you're in for a treat because pretty soon that will be happening. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do yet, because usually on Mondays I try to do games that are a little bit on the longer side, although I guess I've been blending that a little bit with doing the entire uh, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy on my Wednesday streams, just consecutively. But on the other hand, that is technically three games, so I feel like I'm still okay there, or something. Switch elements. Which, yeah, we're gonna go through the earth gate and we're gonna go through a lightning gate from there, I believe. I'm guessing that that's how this is going to shake out. Get from the front, ghost body. Well, thankfully, the, uh, the. The, the little tanuki thing walked right into our electric fork a second time. So that made that fight really, really easy. Way more than it usually would be. Ooh. And so we go this way. Right. Earth is strong against uh, fire and lightning. We missed an item here, but I'm not that burnt up about it. What are we fighting here? Oh, speaking of getting burnt up, this motherfucker. Pyroman. Well, I guess, uh, something about that Yakuza, uh, contact, right? That was the thing earlier, was that they had a Yakuza contact for why the government knew as much shit as they, as they did about ROM. And yeah, this, this version of the fight is really just incredibly shitty. Because we're going to be facing this dumbass wave attack so many times. The one that we have to dodge through. Because that's good design, right? That's not irritating or, or anything. Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, wait. That's... Right, that reminds me that I haven't seen the Muppet Boot. Uh, well, 
The Muppet movie, too, but anything from The Muppet Show in a very long time. Oh, uh, that's a good draw. Oh, yes, we have cleared the field on this bozo. That's actually pretty solid. I don't readily uh, do that most of the time. Drill break. Alright. Can you, can you unfog, please? Can you, like, lose your iframes? Alright, he's gonna do this. Alright, three hits. Damn it! However, he still died, so that's fine. Alright, we're one health. Yeah, okay. Uh, hey, cutscene. Reimu, who's literally like eight in this game. So... Oh, I think he's just too angry, although, I mean, that could be the same thing as being too dumb. Anyway, Moko is mad that we beat her and she wants to become the, the, the head of the Yakuza. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying is that Pyroman just seems like he's too angry to talk and he just makes lighter noises, which are uh, transcribed in a not really very good way. I just think the <laughs> that uh, Avdol usually does in uh, JoJo instead, that would probably be a better way to do it. Well, uh, that, that went in a direction. Guarded by a man called Tarakon. Oh, we fought that guy already. We fought... Perkarton, the operator of Baraka. Wait, wait, no. Never mind, never mind. I mean, I know the blades are similar, but no, it, clearly that's... That's clearly a scissor man. That's, that's clearly a... That's clearly a mantis. That's clearly... Kamakiri man. Scissorman, wait. That's... That's me thinking of Clock Tower. Then again, I did mention that in the stream where we actually were in the Clock Tower, in that I'm pretty sure that that was on purpose, because that's where we fought the boss Scissor Man. And... He was, uh... He was in a clock tower. So I'm sure that it was an intentional reference, because this is exactly the sort of game that would intentionally reference a thing. Now, not like, oh, hey, we, we fucked up and we did this by accident. No, they definitely would have done that on purpose, man. Oh, that's cheap. The... Are you gonna... Are you gonna, like, actually not be an asshole for a second here, buddy? I, uh... I'm so glad that this, uh... This enemy is being like this. Oh, fuck me. Oh, I'm... I'm doing this fight really badly, but I'm also super tilted from the very beginning phase there. That was just horse shit. Well, I mean, clearly, it, it can't be Caesar Man because it's a just a regular praying mantis, and Caesar is in like crab armor, so it's a pre-evolution. It's Scyther Man. All right, got an idea as to what's going on here. I think. At least in terms of the setup. Okay. 
body and shoot some lightning bolts. I think we get a heal at the beginning of the next battle from our exploits there. And there, there is an item. No, apparently we don't. Okay, uh, I guess I fucked it up then. Awesome. Nobody's gonna believe this, but I used to be good at video games. What the hell happened to me? Yeah, it looks like a Pokemon. It sounds like a Pokemon. Uh, yeah, we've been fighting those for most of the game, really. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Well, now I'm thinking about Pokemon. I, I didn't do a stream on Saturday because I was finishing a video editing project and then I was like, oh, I'll make it up on Sunday and then I didn't because I didn't know what to play. And now I'm thinking, I guess I'll just do a Pokemon randomizer as my next big randomizer because uh, looking at the Chrono Trigger one was really just a bit of, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna peek at this and see how good it is. And it's pretty good from what I played and I liked it, but also... I think that's gonna be a bit of a cutoff point for that one, and uh, I'm not sure which Pokemon game I would be running a randomizer on, but I do have options. I can very easily get hold of uh, files for all of the, the Gen 1 through 5. And I think the ones after that have a little bit of jank in them. I probably could run Citra, though, at least. Uh, so here's somebody else who makes uh, makes some funny noises here. As we've got, uh, you know, I think it's supposed to look like uh, Terracon. I, it took me a second to remember what his name was. I actually thought it was Tarkartan for a minute. But no, it it's Terracon. It, it's supposed to look like he's got double scars or something, but he just looks like he has wizard makeup. It just kind of looks like I'm beating up Arcana from Yu-Gi-Oh! Or like somebody like that. Bug eating is a thing that exists, uh, Alice. Don't, don't think too hard about it, I guess. Just, uh, I've I've seen instances of prepackaged, partially cooked bugs. Yeah, I would assume that it, there would be some emulator related uh, funny business. Just by virtue of the fact that a lot of later era console emulators are just not uh, perfect at, at all anyway. Even saying that, there's a lot of shit for, like, SNES 9X that doesn't necessarily work 100% bang on. It's better than it was in the 90s, that's for sure, but even so... Um, yeah. If it's, like, PlayStation or something, that'll emulate fine, because that's... ...borderline solved, really. It's just a matter of hardware performance, and the same... I've heard some not-so-positive feelings about PS2 emulation, and it does have some issues at higher resolutions. But I think for the average, uh, the average user, PS2 emulation is fine. But, my god, any of the... Oh, I just got... Oh, you tried, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Holy fuck! That is a big glitch! Uh, I don't think he's ever gonna come out of Shun Goku Satsu pose here. He's just gonna keep trying to kill me. Oh, no, it, it just took him a couple of years to, to figure out that it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's 
So, I'm pretty sure that what's supposed to be happening there is that that's just supposed to be continuing the, uh, the attack there that was the insta-kill attack. The, the equivalent of the Colonel Execution or whatever it's called in BN, uh, BN3. BN5. Oh, that's a slow-moving ball. Um... So yeah, I guess that attack is just supposed to go longer where he just keeps beating the living shit out of you just to make sure that you're dead. But... Because we had Undershirt, we did not get insta-killed. So yeah, um... Rip in pieces that dude. Anyway, yeah. Uh, GameCube emulation is what I wanted to get around to starting to say, is GameCube emulation is not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's a damn sight better than N64 emulation because N64 emulation, oh my god, N64 emulation is still such a disaster area. And it will likely continue to be so, and it is one of the big things that is getting in the way of there being an N64 Mini. As far as I understand, is that they said stuff like, oh, well, the it's a little too complicated for us to put together, basically. Oh, it's those nerds. Alright, so, yeah, we know we're gonna be fighting at least, uh, at least Yukari's Navi's here, so that's something. That said, uh, looping back around to what I was saying about emulation, Beastness and, by extension, Higgin are, like, perfect. They, they actually get everything right, as far as I know. I'm, I'm pretty sure they are, that they perfectly emulate every existing SNES game. But also, they tend to be very, uh, heavy in terms of your computer needs. In terms of what specs you have to have in order to operate them, just by virtue of the fact that it's a lot of resources to be able to perfect emulate that many games. Meanwhile, uh, SNES 9X and stuff like that, they basically just emulate the most popular things. Uh, air quotes very well, because I gotta have the air quotes there, because if you've seen ZSNES, I mean, come on. That's, uh... We don't talk about ZSNES anymore because it's a thing of the past. It is a relic. Nestopia is one that I have never used, but I've seen it recommended a decent amount. I, for for Nest stuff, and I just got uh, attacked from underneath there. For NES stuff, I usually use FCEUX. ZSNES is... I would not use ZSNES in this day and age just because SNES 9X exists unless you're on a very old machine that can't use more recent versions of SNES 9X. Or... Apparently... So... There is only one thing that I have found that works better on ZSNES than it does on 9X. And I know this because I tried to stream it probably back when I was still in college and a much angrier person than I was. Oh, that was a weird graphical effect. And it is the unfinished demo of Chrono Trigger Crimson Echoes. And I understand why that would not work correctly on everything because it's an unfinished demo and it never will be finished because A, there was, uh, you know, a, an attempt to 
sue the fuck out of those. Uh, no. I almost said DMCA, and that's not correct either. There was a cease and desist order that was put out for it. And also, uh, it has since been usurped by Flames of Eternity, as far as I know. There is, there is or was a project called Chrono Trigger Flames of Eternity that was basically going to be that, but minus the Bleach references, as far as I understand. Because that's, that's one reason why a lot of people suspect that uh, Square Enix was as harsh about it as they were. Or it used to be a reason why people suspected that, is because it has a couple of references to Bleach, inclu including music. And so a lot of people were like, well, that might be a reason why. And then I'm pretty sure that SE has started kicking the shit out of a couple of other uh, fan game projects off and on here and there. So that may no longer be a thing that people believe. For my part, I'm very uncertain as to how much of an effect that would play, but I do admit that that might, uh, kind of make them a little less positive toward the project by virtue of not wanting there to be any trouble there. And of course, as far as any sort of rights issue would go with that music, well, that would be well out of their hands. And again, for anybody who's in here that's like, well, that's wrong, maybe so, but keep in mind that I'm going off a of very old hearsay here and don't 100% remember the exact story anymore, although I suspect that that's also the case with most people in general, just like, okay, that, that happened and that's all they remember about it. I do actually now kind of want to go back and see if I can track that down at some point, because the version that I played apparently is not the most complete version out there on the internet. That was only a 95% complete patch, but there apparently is a 98% version out there. You gonna go try and go to bed? Well, all right, you go ahead and have yourself some nice rest and hopefully, yeah. I almost looped back around through the, the area there. That would have made me feel real stupid. Speaking of which, is there anything else going on over here? No, that's just the way back. Wow, look at this goof is going this fast. Wow. Whoa, hey. Hey, buddy. However, thankfully, we got the stun off on the counter, so we managed to... Oh, okay. Um, I need an earth power here. Get through. If I can find one of those real quick, that will... properly end this section. Right before this boss. Alright. Well, we can't go back that way, because that's the end of the green barrier. Do I have to actually redo the whole loop? Because I got jebated? I believe I do. Damn you, Jeb Bush! I'm gonna run from this fight. I don't care to, to deal with this cannon fodder anymore. And yeah, they uh, they throw that in front of you as a throw off that. Ooh, that's mean. Alright. 
So we got Chen to fight here. You sure about that? You shouldn't say things like that because that's a good way to have it tested. And honestly, we could have just done that with wind. Come on. Okay, so this boss fight, we saw Chen before during the fight against uh, against Ran, but this is a much different fight where we now have to deal with these two uh, these two killer masks here, which are basically uh, pretty similar of an idea to what you see against Color Man in Battle Network 1 combined with we also have a little bit of a little bit of Top Man going on with these uh, with these spins here and overall this fight is going to be a huge pain in the ass We just basically have to be in position where the hockey attack doesn't hit us. Oh. Oh, we fucked that up a little bit, but... We still managed to get the sun, and... Yeah, there we go. Yes, please just walk right back into this. Oh, now we're getting it. Now we're getting into some more interesting attack patterns here. And we get a drill break, so that is... Unfortunately, it's not going to clear the field like I would want it to, but... We'll be able to get some pretty good damage going here. Or maybe it will? We're, we're definitely seeing them, like, take hits. At least in terms of visuals, they do. White card. Fuck, can you, like, hold still? Well, that was really stupidly done on my part, but... Yeah, so this is gonna be a problem where I think I'm gonna have to just build a different folder here. Like, clearly, clearly, we are already having a bit of difficulty with regard to actually... Oh, you fuck. I didn't, I didn't see where that attack was going properly earlier. Alright, well, that's fine. I need to... I need to figure out what to do in terms of a folder instead here, because... You'll also notice a very major issue here... ...of Assface over there can just jump into the masks. And I'm gonna pop open a uh, text document real quick that I have some stuff written down in here. Alright, so we need to pull out Bubble Blaster 2s here. Sort by code. Yeah, this is mostly M, I think. Yeah, so we should be able to... We only have the one bubble blaster? That's, that's pretty awful. Okay, so this is M code and L code as well. That could present a bit of an issue. We don't really need the... Uh, We don't need the area grabs here, so we can actually skip out on those. 
Do we have Marasa V2 in here? Yes, we do. Okay. We're, we're looking pretty good with a lot of this setup. I don't think we need that ship, though. Uh, does that turn into... Uh, I think this turns the field into poison, so we're gonna... We're gonna use that. Okay, I want to see if I have more parts for the swords in Starco here. And we do. Thank goodness. Uh, we have barriers and asterisks as well, so we can... We can have some aura swords, which are uh, piercing attacks. E. Wait, no, I don't... I don't need those uh, those buster amps in here either, do I? Yeah, so let's go back in here and... Yeah, because this is not, right now, a folder based around buster abuse. So, we'll save after we do this switch. Let's see if we can get through this boss. This is... Genuinely, Chen is one of the hardest bosses in the game, and we've got to equip our folder. Well, um, yeah, now I have to sit here and just die, basically, because I forgot to equip my folder properly. Can you, like, actually hit me? Come on. Did... I can't believe I have to sit here and get this boss to hit me when I'm like, oh, I need to reset because I screwed up my fight prep. Like, how is it such a... How am I having trouble with this boss, I guess, is the thing. Because if it's that easy to not get hit, I should just be able to War of Attrition it. Like, right? But apparently... Apparently not. Whatever. We're going. We switched our folder into the correct one this time. We're going in for it, folks. I don't think Dark Desert is actually that helpful here. I could probably switch that out for something else. Ghost Body, Dark Desert. Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll do that now. Barrier, two aura swords, and a another ghost body. Uh, yeah, I can definitely tell, as I was just saying, that yeah, that's not a good choice here because the enemy can just consume your barrier. Damn it! Mistargeted. Alright, so... Alright, and Marasa works like Skullman, so... Yeah, unfortunately it does break the target panel. But... Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Take another barrier on board here, and... Alright, so this... is admittedly not really the ideal way to do this fight, but... You know what? Poison cheesing does work as a, a strategy in the absence of all else.
If all else fails, just make the field completely uh, impossible to inhabit. It will take longer than, like, ten minutes to kill... It won't take ten minutes to kill them, is what I'm trying to say, if I could just remember to say it in English. Also, yes, I completely forgot that I had Maras's, uh Anchor Toss, or whatever PA is called, in this folder. Alright, can you get to an area where I can hit you for, for damage, please? I mean, that, that's not what I was looking for, but all right. Do we have a, a better style here that will... Um, I think which style is going to be our most defensively uh, oriented here. However, I think Chen still uh, deals ground damage, so we're not immune to everything here. Yeah, especially not when stuff like that happens. Yeah, we're, we're taking double damage there, so Chen is either wood or earth element, but I can't tell which. Or her attack is, rather. And I just walked right into that one. That's my fault. We're getting, we're getting pretty close, though. I just have to remember to do this better, basically. And we'll be good to go. And remember what all my combos are. This is going significantly better than it was the first time I played this game. I'll say that for a quite reasonable price. Ghost Body, Barrier, Aura Sword. Do the thing. Miss Target. And start drawing trash. Awesome. My favorite thing to do. My, my folder is so heavily loaded down with PAs that I don't want to use any of them because they're too good. Yeah, see, look at this. Look at this shit. I... I have six chips that are all parts of PAs and one left that I then just had to throw away to an ad. That was a pretty slick dodge, though. And again with this dog shit. I... This is... Quite possibly the worst shuffle that I've gotten in a while here. That's better. That's much better. Unfortunately, our our turn now has only a Mega Halberd in it, but... I mean, the damage is pretty good, so... That's something... So, yeah, Heavy Anchor, Bubble Blaster. Okay. Heavy Anchor, Bubble Blaster, Marasa, Barrier... Ghost Body and Max Gauge. That should get us some pretty good stuff here. Anchor Rain. Okay, I don't remember how this one works. So we'll, we'll see how this goes in a moment. Oh, wow. That is some serious damage. That's... That's fucking amazing, really. That's... That's kind of gross. <laughs> So, Orsward, Druidman, do your thing. Give me back some health. And throw our big poison globule. 
Unfortunately, it's not such a good... What am I missing from here? Oh, right, I don't have the magic bomb in this folder anyway. I don't even have it in that code, apparently. I have one more thing. Yes, I have the Dark Desert, but... Well, I mean, I guess it's a way to clear... Clear the status here, and unfortunately... Alright, can you go in the back row and just die already? Yes! Thank you! Fucking finally. Ugh. God. What an obnoxious boss fight. Alright, save. And we're back in this folder, which is used specifically for dealing with bosses. And not... Well, you know what? I should definitely use a full energy right now. Alright. Equip. Save. And let's keep going, because we're going to have to deal with the other part of things soon. But, first, we're going to have some enemies in the way, so we may as well... Uh, may as well deal with that. That up the poison ship over there, yes. So I'm assuming that we're gonna have to do something a little funny here, basically. Well, thank you for appearing right in front of me, enemy. Give me your dig drill. Okay, no, it's just that there was a path there that was bait. Okay. Gotcha. No, I thought there was going to be like an actual trick involved with that, but nope. It's just, hey, here's something to catch you off guard if you're stupid. Awesome. Classic design. That. Don't grab it again. And here we are against Ran. I think this is Ran, right? No, this is gonna be Cerno, which should be pretty easy to deal with. I mean, honestly, that would need to be a powerful air conditioner to do that. Hey, there's Iku who is going to be helping us out a little bit. Again, how fucking strong is the AC if it can be... This is actually going to speak very much to my biggest problem with the plots of Mega Man Battle Network games, and that is that you get instances of... It's just kind of a recurring thing in these games where somehow the various, uh, how like every enemy NetNavi somehow can over, can massively overspec a machine through its internet connection. And 
While I admit to never having tried, I'm quite certain that that is legitimately fucking impossible. On a level that is, like, actually so illogical that it kind of harms the plots very severely. Like, yeah, why are you complaining about Battle Network of all games? It's very obviously fictitious, but also, like, it's just a, you know, it is a certain level where you can no longer suspend disbelief, you understand? is just something that is so fake that it loops around to you know continuing to being impossible to take and I'm I'm trapped cool I, I love it that is not something I was expecting to happen to me against Cerno who is like just garbage tier I think I did this one to myself I don't want this fucker to accept blame for that because honestly not deserved. Get out of here with this bullshit. Do you see those MS Paint uh, electricity graphics? That's that's sure something. That's about as well as I can draw an MS Paint as well. Actually, probably not even that well, but I digress. Yeah, I was going to say, Rayson is going to nuke them with a mech, right? Because that's... You know, something we've already dealt with here. Alright, so let's let's go in here and let's deal with Druidman. Head into the basement. Alright, a quick save here. Well, we get to see Jace again. What's up, buddy? Alright, well, are we dealing with more dungeon, or do we just get to go... No, of course there's more dungeon. It's... We don't get the free walk until the final boss, final boss, and Druid Man is not the final boss. This is where things get a little bit weird, I think, because, yeah. Grab that. We go the poison route. I would assume that we don't go straight, because that's a little too obvious, right? They're going to make you work for it, surely. They want to make you work for it, so that way they can tell you that they like the way you work for it and inform you about the diggity deficit. <laughs> that was stupid by my standards, even, so what am I saying? Um, fuck's sakes, let's just kill this, enemy, this group of enemies, come on. And thank goodness that the charge cannon enemy back there took a bunch of hits from those... Uh, lightning strikes, because otherwise they can pierce through inv uh, invisibility. Because fuck you, that's why. The water. The end of this is just another poison. So, um, did we fuck up? Yeah, I think we have to restart here. Alright, fire. There's a Grass, that will lead us to poison again, so that's... Right, that's not very useful. Or is it? Am I supposed to just grab poison and go back or something? I forget if there was even a thing behind us now, so... I guess I'm gonna go check that real quick.
grab this, and we go back. Otherwise, I think the only one we haven't, like, tried in any real capacity is the, the leaf one, right? Okay, no, we need water to get through. Right, so this should lead us to ground. Did we see a water earlier? I do not remember. Item. Another railgun three, that's nice. Take ground and go to fire. Fire would have water on the other side of it, right? Because of course it would. Otherwise, there's no way out. Okay, no, they're gonna make us do a bit of a run around here. This way, and we still need water. Lightning. Water, there we go. All right. We're just gonna run from this fight because I don't wanna waste my full synchro on that. Those enemies are ones that uh, give up higher tiers of Aura Sword. Alright, so... Is this all for this dungeon already? Are we at the, the boss here? Yep. Uh, look at that special effect. You're not seeing things. That spark is not moving. Oh. Oh, that's actually well foreshadowed. Remember we saw Druid Man in the school computer? That would be an easy way to bypass things if it turns out that Jace is actually Miss Asakura. That's... Shockingly clever for this series slash game. Considering how a lot of the writing has not always been good, I actually think that's kind of impressive. Well, here's where we get into a fight with uh, Druid Man here, right? Oh, he's... He's running off, so we're not done yet. We just got a cutscene. Teleport. And we get some more of this shit. Let's just ignore it. I don't know if we have any uh, actual puzzle solving to do or just a maze to navigate that's designed to slow you down. I guess we'll find out in a moment or two, won't we? Nice. Six grand. That shit and hey, another step cross. Yay! Yay! All right. 
Now we're back to the actual puzzles. Okay. Do we have anything we can, uh... Alright, so we're gonna need either poison or fire to go through, I think. At least over there. I couldn't quite see what was going on all the way, so yeah. Oh, really? I can't escape from this fight. Is the charge cannon fucker that bad? I mean, I guess they have, like, the most annoying thing in the game because they can go through your invincibility, but... Well, it sure didn't die, unfortunately. That's because it has, like a trillion health. For some reason they just made this enemy really obnoxious. I don't know I don't know why these enemies this specific type of enemy really is this much of a pain in the ass. That doesn't get us away. We need fire to go through there, which should be on this, the other end of this gate. Can we leave this fight, please? Yes. Right, fire, and it'll take us down here. And once there is no way out without, uh, maybe this way. All right, poison, electric. We need electric to go through here, right? And this is basically going to bring us to the place, right? I don't know why I'm stopping to fight this enemy, but you know what? Here we are. And that's the wrong column to target. That didn't hit anything. That is legitimately the least useful place we could have done that. Whoops. Yay! Today we got money, which we don't really need right now, but okay. Save, and here we go. We get some more cutscene, and we finally get to fight Druid Man. At least in story. Well, this won't be too hard. He postures a lot, but we're gonna basically ruin his life. We're gonna end his entire career, as I usually put it. I could stand some better draws than this, though. That is for sure. Because these, this hand is not really that inspiring, but it will certainly do the trick here. Yeah, do you remember this attack? He's doing this to us now. Ghost, hit him. I think we're immune to the, the gas blast attack while he's while we're invin invisible oh wow now he's starting to teleport around oh you know what good on you buddy you're you're trying I appreciate that I think what I don't appreciate are these shit garbage baby draws can you stop that This is probably the most trouble this boss has given me in the story mode ever. 
Like, usually I just draw into a nice sequence of the Elephangs at high level, and I just humiliate him. But right now, the game is just like, actually, I'm gonna make sure that you don't do that. And then we draw into a drill break that gets three hits off anyway, and that's pretty great. Oh no, the plot happened without us. Oh no. Well. Not bad. Let's stop here. This is probably going to be our... our uh, yeah, might not be able to come back. So we do get a save right before the point of no return, and I suspect that this is why the save uh, in events is a little bit jank. I mean, this kind of looks like... Well, we've got the Seal of War Calcos on the floor. Maybe you shouldn't stand in that. Oh, nope. We're getting sucked into the internet, aren't we? Yep. Alright, so this... Perfect synchro thing, gotcha. Okay, so before we do this, we're going to switch up our playstyle very significantly. We are going to yank full open out. We're going to keep damage ghost. We're going to take all of our buster buffs that we can. Unfortunately, I don't have very many buster attacks, but that will have to do. And I have to find uh, the one that I'm looking for here. Find Blitzbuster. There we go. Yes, this is going to be the way that we deal with this boss. Because it is going to be a thing that we can do a lot of damage to. Also, hey, look, we're like an actual RPG uh, grouping now. But it doesn't have iframes, and we have a lot of attacks to dodge. But the buster damage is going to be immense once we switch into fighter style. Kikuri, this is the final boss of the first game, basically. So, again, as I mentioned, there's a lot of the PC-98 era characters in here. Which is really neat to see. Well, it enters combat mode, which has a big sphere on the back of it. Alright, so this should hopefully be doable. I do have my concerns, and I have more concerns now that I realize that I have chosen the wrong folder here. So we switched to fighter style immediately, and we're just gonna shoot a bunch of plasma footballs. And I'm gonna, gonna say I'm gonna forget how uh, we have to break through this barrier, basically. All right, so that attack is a pain to dodge. And yeah, this is a thing that makes this boss even harder. Is that you can see Kikuri is putting up a barrier after every one of her big attacks. And we just want to we just want to rip through that using these methods, and that attack is just kind of absolutely ridiculous to expect us to dodge, frankly. All right, can we land all three daggers? No, we didn't. We didn't line that up right.
And now we're gonna get piss droplets, aren't we? And that's gonna be like all but impossible to dodge in this uh, situation. Yeah, this this droplet attack is just kind of the worst. And now we get the satellite lasers. So you can see that Kikari is just absolutely throwing everything at us. This boss is not not fucking around. I it, it's kind of impressive when you you know after you consider just how weak a lot of the a lot of the final bosses are in Battle Network games. And yeah, that happened. So we're we're toast. That's a shame. I need to remember to have the correct folder set up, and I'm going to go in here and redo my Navi add-ons here. I mean, we can take extra HP if we want. We don't have enough space for that. Never mind. Full open, Buster Rapid, Blitzbuster. If we get two full opens, that's unnecessary. Okay, run it. Put this folder. Save again. Alright, and now, blah blah, step on the seal of Oracalcos. Do we get double cutscenes to skip? I think we... I think we do. No, we don't. Alright. Final boss time. Yeah, yeah, skip the cutscene. Alright, let's let's fight the giant orb. And remember, don't waste chips in the barrier. Which is what I was doing last time, because I'm a fucking fool. Alright, ghost body. Fire some plasma footballs. I forgot to switch to fighter style. We dodged that correctly, thank goodness. Switch to fighter style. Medicine Barrier, Max Gauge. All right, will that even hit? Yes, it will, thank goodness. And you can see a little bit of that screen shake over at the edge there that uh, is definitely looking a little bit off, to say the least. All right, we'll, we'll equip the, the, the power off because we don't have Sakuya in here to be an actual good uh, thing to use the power boost on. Poison damage from that, but not quite. Okay. Oh wow, we actually were safe from that attack. That's kind of impressive. Unfortunately, that's not really going to work again because, yeah. Okay, I, I feel like using Dark Desert is not going to be. Uh, very helpful with ever here. Alright, so here come the satellite lasers. Druidman railgun. And go. Alright, 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 alright. Yeah, yeah, you're you're doing this shit. I don't care. I don't think you get hit by you do, okay, thank goodness. Fuck me, I I dodged into that attack. I'm not bright. Satellite lasers. I'm dodging those real badly. I'm surprised I didn't get roasted. I kind of deserved it at that point. Right. Ghost body. Start bone sawing through this, this barrier here. Bone saw is ready.
and just apply the same tool as usual, just mega halberd your problems away. And there we go, we beat the final boss, it only took us two tries! That usually takes me a lot longer. That is a hard ass fight, let me tell ya. Again, I think the only time when Gensokyo is name-dropped, so... That's very strange. Also, you'll notice that the name is Ayakashi here, and it was Akiyashi earlier, so, um... Yeah, somebody needs to do some copy editing here. I don't know if this is the case for... The newest version because I forgot to update. But, uh, yeah, if that was not fixed, that is a thing that needs to be fixed. And yeah, we get it. The final boss is a nihilist, and blah, blah, blah. There's a. To be fair. Well, actually, I'll talk about that in the credits, I suppose, because there's going to be more cutscenes. And we get a pretty standard issue power of friendship thing here. Except not quite. Well, okay, never mind. Now it is, so. Yeah, so we get, like, every major character, and even some that aren't, saying, hey, yeah, vaporize this portal. And fittingly, we just machine gunned the, the portal with a Mega Buster, just like we did to the final boss. And we skip over the whole existence of a hospital sequence, and yeah, it works just like stands. Except when they don't want them to work that way. Oh, we get it. The nerd doesn't, uh... So what's the deal with Sanae and the camera? Is it just auto-follow her? Like, somebody you don't want to encounter in a city in Final Fantasy XIV? So, yeah, let me go ahead and unloop this controller from under my desk, because I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I'm using my new, uh... V2 PS4 controller via Bluetooth. And I feel like that was a somewhat noticeable difference, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so overall, this game is very, very good. This is quite well done for a fan project of this magnitude and replicating this type of game. The writing is at times decent and at times god-awful. There is a serious problem that I've mentioned before with a lot of Toho fans just looking at things and being like, okay, we're just going to use the memes over and over again. And you can see that in the reductive character and references in the character of Pachuli, for instance, who is just absolutely cut to nothing despite being, in my opinion, a character with some fairly interesting potential, or at least someone with a... with a god dang personality, and... Uh, basically who could have been sort of like Element Man from Seven. 
with the uh, changing attack elements and all of that, because that's her thing in series, is that she can use magic of all types. But they decided not to do that. So, there's some problems there with that sort of stuff, and there's a couple of graphical issues, uh, even aside from the fact that some things are just straight up MS Paint, obviously, and some things were clearly removed, but also... There were a couple of minor graphical glitches here and there. And the color selection can be a little bit funky and make things look like they're just sort of pasted in. But, overall, very, very good. And the soundtrack is excellent, as stated before. There's a couple of places where it's very clearly not something that could just be played back on a GBA, but that's okay. So with regard to the ending, oh, I guess we're getting a post credit scene here. Hmm. Clear data will be saved, and it was indeed saved. So we have a cleared game file, and we're getting uh, some stuff going on here. Queen of Darkness. Gotcha. Well, I guess we'll see what we can do. Again, this will probably show up off and on on Fridays, uh, depending on when I do or do not feel like trying out a new game, which is what I'm mostly going to do on Fridays now. So, to loop back around to the thing that I said I was going to talk about in a minute, uh, the credit sequence is shorter than I expected. In the ending, there's this idea of uh, with, with Kikari of just... The Ayakashi being ejected from the world and being looked down upon and how there's nothing that could be done to change that. There's sort of this running theme to a lot of the less happy things in Toho of dealing with the idea of everyone just fulfilling their role and... Uh, sort of looking at more at the idea of how you should break out of that and not be consigned to what you're told to be by people who are more important than you or whatever. So the, it's interesting to possibly see a little bit of touching on that, especially because that's something that tends to get ignored. Like, there's a a bunch of weird people who are very, very right-wing who are into the series for some reason. Even though the series is very blatantly against that sort of thing. So, uh, shrug, basically. I don't have a whole lot else to add for that. I'm poking around at everybody here real quick to see if, uh, did we get that earlier? Again, I have a running list of all the ones that I know that work. Uh, no, that's that's the wrong one. Okay, one nine six five two three three, right? Oh, that happens. Yeah, nineteen sixty four fifty two thirty three. All right, so this area is not going to help us. I don't know how to do any of the post game stuff really, so we'll come back to this again in the future, but I do want to take a quick poke into the dev room if I can remember where that is and show off at least one of the uh, the bosses that we haven't seen to this point. We got a couple that we can check out here. So let's, let's save real quick and well now that we've done that alright, so we've got Mima who is showing us the wrong portrait for some reason. And we're all the way in against an SP version of Mimo right off the bat. That is a little bit cruel. But okay. Alright. 
ghost body and just start tearing into things here. So I described Ron as basically being base before, but this is kind of like base, but even more so. And I'm pretty sure that we are extremely dead here. This this is a fight that I'm very unfamiliar with. Yeah, especially if we're going to suddenly get hit by that double combo. That is... That's like a cheat, almost. Come on. That's... You're not allowed to do the fatalities until you run their life meter out, you jackass. So I'll have to come back to that later with, like, an actual setup. Also, you can see we have a gold star on our menu. That's neat. Alright, let's 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 take a quick look at Yomu here. Who... So in canon, she has this weird thing going on where she's part ghost and not entirely for, for some reason. It's a little hard to explain, so we'll see what goes on with that here. I was going to say, is this going to be a, a... Yes. Okay, so we can't do damage to her main body. We have to target the little sprite behind her. Which means that our folder is really not set up to deal with this. This is going to be a bit of a struggle, but if we can pull it out, that'll just prove how awesome we are, I guess. Alright, well, the Dark Desert tiles seem to actually uh, damage her, so that's that's cool. I'll accept that, considering we've already fucked certain things up pretty badly here. This isn't seeming like a very hard boss fight. Oh, I heard that sound. That's Delta Ray Edge. Let's let's move our asses. Oh, it's not even Delta Ray Edge, it's just... It sounds like it would be Delta Ray Edge, but it's not. Also, her sword slashes, uh... Are counterattacks, that's neat. So don't hit her wheels while she's slashing. Okay, so... That was... That was reasonable. Not super easy, but doable. So, cool. Alright, Philandra, I, I forget if we showed you off. Alright, let's... Let's try Yuyuko first. And of course, we don't get a full heal, which... Makes me look like a big idiot. For doing this, but... We'll, uh... We'll see how this goes. So, Yuko has attributes in place where you think she's gonna be, uh, where, where you think she's gonna be Serenade, basically, but it's only a few things that make the resemblance clear. And yeah, this is, again, why I need a heal, because I'm not gonna be able to get anywhere in this fight in this condition. So, kind of like a fusion between Serenade and Base, but again, we don't get the... We do not get a... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We don't get Serenade's Raymond, basically, so... Uh, she's not going to be doing the counterattack spin, as far as I can tell. Which is good, because that's irritating. But also, it leaves Serenade uh, vulnerable to the most uh, simple strategy in the entire game, basically, of just back them against the wall and steal all their area. So that made that fight kind of suck back in BN3. Anyway, this is, this is Flandra. She's got 
some very varied attack patterns going on here. Like, we're just seeing a lot of stuff that's very unusual in general, and the the most normal thing that we got there is that's just base's Earthbreaker attack, except not quite. And unfortunately, we are losing, like, all of our territory to be able to deal with that. That's, that's very unfortunate. So, we'll just add that barrier, even though that's a terrible idea, but... Yikes. Stop that, please. All right, we get that going. Finally, we can start doing some combos. Our, our draws after that first turn were impressively awful. That, uh, that buffed up, uh, Mega Halberd is gonna do us a ton of good. Right, heavy Anchor, Bubble Blaster. Alright, Country Roads, take me home. 360 damage to the entire field. That's not gross or anything. So, yeah, that's a challenging fight. There's a lot going on there, to say the least. And unfortunately, we didn't even get a chip out of it. I would have liked to have been able to do something with that. Me Was there one earlier? I don't even remember. Alright, so we're gonna... We're gonna attempt to Yuko one more time, and then we're going to... round things out for for the evening. I think we've... I think we've done enough at that point, and... There's me forgetting to switch into fighter style. Fighter style... Da -da 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 Well, if you want to just hold still while I, I poison you, that's going to make things even easier. I just stand here and machine gun for a little bit, and we got some pretty decent damage in just in that little uh, section of time there. Alright, so let's dump that stun game, unfortunately, even though that's a pretty good attack for us. Uh... Well, I guess it's not an attack itself, rather, but it's a pretty good boost. There we go. That's what I'm meaning to explain. And we'll, we'll do Tankman with incorrect aim, because, of course... Oh, God. I really do not want to use that railgun right now. So I'm just going to add it. Can you stop with the fucking ghost shots already, please? Like, switch to a... Switch to some fucking normal attacks. Dongus. Alright, barrier up. And get into all this stuff. I was gonna say, please stay in the front for a bit. And now we get this shit again. Ugh. Oh. Unfortunately, that attack pattern is really, really obnoxious of just, oh, I'm just gonna keep doing this over and over and over and over, you know. The same shit for five minutes. Right, well, we got a, a nice full hand here of stuff that I feel like throwing away, so. 
Fuck you! You can literally just... Just some of the most uninteresting AI I've seen ever. Just, oh! Use Limit Break, use Limit Break, use Limit Break, use Limit Break, use Limit Break! Great! Do you want a fucking medal? For programming this? Which is unfortunate because it's very clear that there's a lot going on with this boss that could be pretty cool. Like, some of these attack patterns are pretty neat. But if all that's going to happen constantly is just the, the fucking... This shit. Get out of the goddamn back row, motherfucker! Holy fuck! Ugh! I'm starting to hate this. This is what you would call very not interesting. I literally just did a just finished a review that came out today about a about a game that's just a, the same things over and over for a certain segment of it, and this is giving me flashbacks already. And that was a game I actually liked. You didn't even fucking move. Holy fuck, dude! Throw that out. Well, finally this fight is like almost over because she actually decided to start moving. Right, and the thing decided to disappear. Is she in iframes? Yes, she is. Alright, cut the crap already. Come on. She's not taking poison damage. Fuck. Fuck, dude. Piss on it! There we go! Finally! I just had to get mad enough, I guess. And we don't even get anything for it. Well, you know what? I guess we get bragging rights. Whatever. That's... that's gonna be it for me today. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and thank you for seeing us to the end of this game. Despite my responses to... to that, it really is just because I think something was going wrong with the AI there. It was reminding me a little bit of Game Maker type of RNG. Uh, I did a lot of projects back in college with Game Maker, uh, the, the old, uh, you know, video game making thing. In fact, I had to use Game Maker for a college class in Game Dev, and I noticed that a lot of times the RNG would sort of uh, get a little bit stuck in an area, so if you were doing, like, a shooter, I made at least one bullet hell type of shooter, and you start clearing out waves of enemies very quickly, you'll get an absolute fuck ton of power-ups at certain time periods, just because, like, the RNG will not generate very often. So I wonder if something like that was going on with the attack pattern setup, because, yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit weird. But yeah. Uh, later.